might fall this morning, and then it's supposed to be 90 this afternoon. So, <laughs> I'll get you things in the next Is that one of those where you all tell me the names and tell me the Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so a few announcements, guys. Um, the kitchen does still need some help Sunday mornings during the coffee hour, if you wanted to assist with that. Logos is needing some dessert um, signer up for people. Um, Terrence is scheduled to bring dessert on Wednesday. He did tell me that his favorite, favorite dessert is the ice cream sandwiches. So it's not even something that you guys have to bake. You can just go to the store and grab. Um, adult Sunday School is still going on if you wanted to join in for that. And then the Seamless Bible Study that's starting October 3rd. There's a sign-up sheet out there for it too. Um, and then Holly will be doing that Sunday evenings. And we will start with our opening sentences. Let our words and thoughts be acceptable to God. The Lord, the Lord is our God. We introduced this song for those of you who had not sung it before. We introduced it last week. So we're going to be doing Sea of Victory again. And Eddie mentioned that I had a little bit of a history with this song, and so I'm going to share that with you and try not to promote that. Um, May 26, 2020, Eddie and I were here at the church um, practicing some music for the youth worship services that we recorded in lieu of logos when COVID first hit. And we were getting ready to practice this song, and Kurt returned from a doctor's appointment. And the doctor had told him that, yes, it probably is cancer. And we sat down to do this song, and I looked at Eddie and said, I will not be singing. And um, the words of this song, every time I every time I sing them, they really hit me. And we don't know how the victory will turn out. We don't, I mean, we sing, and it's great for scripture. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And at that moment, we didn't know what that would look like. Um, thankfully, it's recovery and um, doing really well now, but at that time we didn't know, and I know that's not everyone's story when they get that diagnosis or they're hit with bad news. But uh, every time I sing this song, I am reminded that whatever we're faced with, ultimately there is victory in that, and we may not see it this side of heaven, but it's coming. So we just invite you to sing along with us as you feel comfortable. Be a victory. Oh, 
as despised sinners, but as beloved children, with the confidence of the children of God. Bring that game down. Let us humbly confess our sin. O oh Lord, Lord our God, God you, you call us to work for a world where all will be fed and have dignity, but we find ourselves distracted by our own desire. You call us to seek justice and peace, so we are satisfied with injustice and discord. You call us to bring liberty to the oppressed, but we do not insist on freedom for all. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Turn us to your will by the power of your spirit, so that all may know your justice and peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Lord God, hear us now as we confess our sin before you. Beloved ones, hear the good news. Anyone, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life is begun. Trust God that you are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. I like that. 
everyone gets together and they be nice to each other. Mm -hmm. Very good. So does that happen a lot? Do we all get together and we all get along? Is that no. does that happen all the time? No. no. So have you ever heard the word peacemaker? What do you think a person who's referred to as a peacemaker would do? Yeah. Creates peace, yes. God. God. Okay. Any other thoughts? Okay, well, there are some people. Oh, I just dropped the noisy back door. There are some people that we know that are really good in their conflict at coming in and helping two sides talk it out, work together, and create peace from a, a contra, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's conflict. Yeah. So I have an example of this. A few years ago during Bible school, there were some people who had to work together, but they weren't communicating very well and they weren't getting along very well. And I was kind of busy doing some other things. And so I came to Pastor Eddie and I said, Pastor Eddie, there are a couple of people that are having trouble working together, and I think they just misunderstand each other. Can you go talk to them? And so Pastor Eddie went and he talked to them, and both sides felt heard, and they worked it out, and then everyone felt a lot better. It was much more peaceful. And it's just a misunderstanding, right? So that's a really good thing to be able to bring peace, right? Can you think of times when you hear the word peace in the Bible? I didn't have it. Hang on. I marked it in this Bible. So in the book of Matthew, Jesus gives what we call the Sermon on the Mount, right? And have any of you heard the word the Beatitudes? The Beatitudes is a list of blessings. So if I read this to you, you might you might recognize it. It says Matthew 5 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they should be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And it goes on. And uh, verse 9 is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. So making peace is a really good thing. God wants us to be peacemakers. He wants us to work together. Now, are there some times that maybe you shouldn't jump in and get involved in a situation? You know what I think about? I think about siblings fighting and another sibling getting involved when they don't really, when it's going to just make it worse. Has, it, has that ever happened? Have you, have you seen? <laughs> not calling anyone out or anything. But there are times, I know when my brothers and I were growing up, my brother Dave and I, we get along great now, but we fought constantly. Constantly. And if my older brother Mike tried to get involved, I just got your man. And is like, stay out of it. So Mike wasn't really able to be a peacemaker between Dave and I. Now, sometimes my parents could. But so being a peacemaker, part of that is trying to know when you can be helpful and when you have to stay out of it and let people work it out for themselves. That's not always easy to figure out, is it? But that's that's something that we should all strive to do when, to get involved and help bring peace when we can, right? Okay. Well, let's, let's pray, and then um, you guys can come grab a rosy bucket, okay? Dear God, Dear God, God thank you for loving us. Thank, thank you for loving us. us. Thank you for creating each of us. Thank, thank you for creating, creating each, each of us. In your image. In your image. Help us to be peacemakers. Help us to be peacemakers. And do your work in the world. And do your work in the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
by the voice of your spirit. Put your law into our hearts, write your word in our minds, and show us your will in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Luckily, when our technology fails, and it's really not our technology, it's when we forget to charge our devices, <laughs> paper still works. Um, a very good morning to you all. A very big hearty thank you again uh, to all those who continue to help make this service happen, uh, this morning happen. So Sunday school teachers, um, adult Sunday school, Junior high and high school, Sunday school, elementary Sunday school. Thank you all. Um, kitchen help, thank you. Linda, all the staff, thank you for all your work. Chuck, thank you for being here. Jessica, thank you for your meeting today. Okay. <clears throat> Got two passages to read from this morning as per the practice. Sometimes I do more, but today we're doing two Old Testament and New Testament. <laughs> Our Old Testament reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 32, verses 1 to 8, and then jumping to 16 through 18. Isaiah 32, 1 to 8, 16 to 18. Let us all now listen to the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule in justice. Each will be like a hiding place from the wind, a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. And then the eyes of those who see will not be closed, and the ears of those who hear will give attention. The heart of the hasty will understand and know, and the tongue of the stammerers will hasten to speak distinctly. The fool will no more be called noble, nor the scoundrel said to be honorable. Because the fool speaks folly, and his heart is busy with iniquity, to practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning I am who I am, to leave the craving of the hungry unsatisfied, and to deprive the thirsty of drink. As for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. But he who is noble plans noble things, and on noble things he stands. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field, and the effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Now we turn to the Apostle Paul's letter to, Roman, uh, to Rome, <clears throat> chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Romans 12, 9 to 21. Let, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one for evil. 
that he had thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will reap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you to God. Let's pray. And now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The second personality type that we'll be exploring in our series is known as the peacemaker. So, much like our challenger brothers and sisters from last week, our peacemaker brothers and sisters can be a real mixed bag. Uh, and so, you know, what it really comes down to, and we talked about this last week as well, maybe not directly, but tangentially, uh, is self-awareness, okay? And so, but before we get into the exploring of the personality type and how we need self-awareness and how different peacemakers live out that personality, personality type, let's explore with the assistance of our passages from this morning, what God is actually seeking in making our peacemaking brothers and sisters in God's own image, okay? Right? So what is it that God's trying to accomplish with these folks? Okay, so if you want, go ahead, open your Bible back up to Isaiah 32. We're going to go through it again, a little bit by a little bit, because I think it's going to be quite helpful to do so. So the prophet starts out by declaring that there will be a king who will reign in righteousness, and uh, that presumably there will be princes under the king um, who, who will rule in justice. So they're going to collaborate, and righteousness and justice are going to be how things perf uh, function in, in, in this kingdom, because you know, kings and, and, and princes. Now, if we stop right there, if we read just verse 1, if we stop right there, we can then run with whatever we or whoever is reading thinks righteousness and justice to be. This is called proof texting. This is not something we want to do in practice. We come to scripture with our own ideas about what righteousness and justice look like. And then we give our modern day leaders, quote, biblical authority when they do what we like because they're practicing our version of righteousness and justice because it says right here. Of course, we only read verse one and we forget everything that comes after. No, no. So to prevent this kind of poor biblical interpretation and limiting of God, we must read in context. There it is again, it's my favorite word. Context, 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 thereby practicing responsible biblical interpretation and honoring God. When we proof text, we limit God. I do not want to be accused when it comes my time of limiting God. That is not something I'm interested in. Back to our text. We read on, okay? We read on because the prophet goes on to paint a picture for us of what it looks like for this king and these prince, this king to reign in righteousness and these princes to rule in justice. What does it look like? Paints a word picture. They will be like a hiding place from the wind, a shelter from the storm. Golly. There are so many things in this world that make us feel like we are in a storm. And more often than not, at least currently, our leaders make it feel worse. Come on. Things that make us feel insecure, that make us feel as if our very lives are threatened. Righteousness and justice, though, become about helping everyone to feel as if their lives are not threatened, as if we're not in constant tumult. Instead of exacerbating the tumult, stop it. 
navigate through the conflict. Navigate through the conflict. A tall task, no doubt, but one very much worth engaging in. These kings and princes are like streams of water in a dry place. Righteousness and justice are about making it so that everyone can be refreshed and nourished. So that everyone, again, can feel as if their lives are not threatened. What does everything need to survive? Water. Hence the analogy. So righteousness and justice are about providing water in a dry place. Paints the picture of lives being secured, again, secured and not threatened. Like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. This is again about bringing life and not threatening or taking away life. Shade provides respite and a break from the relentless heat of the sun. The contention being made here is that this kind of righteousness and justice, this kind, will be so infectious and so compelling that we will have to take breaks because we'll keep going and we'll want to keep going and we'll want to keep going. We'll keep want, want to keep working in that weary land. One foot in front of the other. Oh, but we're going to need a break. <clears throat> because bringing this kind of righteousness and justice, like I said, is like bringing it to a weary land. And so when we need a break from this laborious work, our leaders will provide it for us as we rest in the shade of the giant rock in the weary land. And our co-laborers will pick it up and continue. You take a break, and I keep going. <clears throat> and then I take a break, and then you keep going. What follows in the Isaiah passage, then, is that this righteousness and justice, as stated earlier, will be so compelling that people will see clearly. Look at that. People will see clearly. They'll hear clearly. Those who are uncertain will have understanding. Those who have trouble communicating this righteousness and justice will speak clearly about it. Essentially, the contention being made by the prophet is that we will quit falling for the baits and hooks of those who lead us astray, who lead us away from God. We'll quit falling for it. The eyes of those who see will not be closed. Some of us close our eyes to what's happening in front of us and close our ears. The eyes of those who see will not be closed. The ears of those who hear will give attention. The heart of the hasty will understand and know, and the tongue of the stammerers will hasten to speak distinctly. And what is the result? The fool, the one who's doing the deceiving, the one who's doing the trickeration, the one who's in cahoots, will no more be called noble. Please, man, do we need to get there. Nor the scoundrel said to be honorable. Oh, imagine. Imagine. We will quit falling for the fear-mongering tactics of the foolish. Those who are fools will no longer be called noble. Those who are scoundrels who cheat and who manipulate and double speak and lack integrity and consistency will no longer be said to be honorable. Good job. No. Enough. Stop. No. Who is going to be the ones doing the work, telling them that they are no longer honorable? Us. Because our eyes are finally open, our ears are open, our mouths, which failed to speak, are able to speak. And how will we know the fools? Well, what does the fool actually do? The fool speaks folly. Verse 6, his heart is busy with iniquity. To practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning I am who I am, to leave the cravings of the hungry unsatisfied, and to deprive the thirsty of drink. Folks do this all the time. We close our eyes, plug our ears. Stop. No. What 
What does the scoundrel actually do? As for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. Plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, as if the poor don't have it bad enough already. Even when the plea of the needy is right, come on. How much of this nonsense do we deal with on a regular basis? Stop. Stop. Righteousness and justice of God reveals fools for fools and scoundrels for scoundrels. The noble, verse 8, who practices the righteousness and justice of God are starkly juxtaposed against the fools and the scoundrels. But he who is noble plans noble things, and on noble things he stands. And what is the effect of this righteousness and justice? The effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. My people, all God's people, will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. In our Pauline passage, the apostle also builds up to what it is to live peaceably with all. Love, he starts out with, needs to be genuine. We all know what this means. We just don't like to talk about it. Everyone can talk a good game. Oh, everyone can talk a good game. We throw the, love, the word love around hither and yon. I love tacos. I love baseball. I love chocolate chip cookies. I love the Huskers. I mean, well, hey, you, you, you that took it to OT against the brink of home. Huh? Darn close. Good job. Genuine love is about what we do and not about what we say. Come on. Genuine love is about what we do and not about what we say. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Imagine if we weren't deceived by evil, tricked into thinking that what is evil is actually good. There are people out there intentionally trying to deceive us, friends. And the apostle calls us to cling to what is good to counteract the deception of evil. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Wow, that'd be nice to see. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Let the power of the resurrection compel you. That you can navigate conflict. Because what's the end result of the conflict? Resurrection, we win! patient in tribulation. It's going to get mucky. Be constant in prayer. I need to do I need to do better. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Oh my gosh, that is the exact opposite of what we are doing today. That, I'm not playing. That is the exact opposite. We're just name calling, throwing people in categories. You're wrong, you're wrong. Left, right, Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. Wrong, 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 wrong. Terrible, evil people. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. It's the exact opposite of what we're doing in real time. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. That's why when I come and ask for your prayer concerns, I'm like, what, what is also good? It's not just about praying for what, what's, what's wrong and where people need help. It's about praying for what we're celebrating. Because that's what it is to live, my dear friends, in the constant tension between good and bad. 
The constant tension between joyful and grieving. Both can happen simultaneously. Both do happen simultaneously. It's not about either or, one or the other. Live in harmony with one another. <laughs> Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Practice some humility. Never be wise in your own sight. There's that humility again. Do I have all the answers? Nope. And I don't, I, at least I'm pretty confident, I don't pretend to have all the answers. I seek your insight, I seek your <laughs> own wisdom to give us a fuller, clearer picture. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable. There's that word again, honor in the sight of all. The end result, what does all this add up to? Living peace and being all. These are the things, believe it or not, that our peacemaker brothers and sisters are trying to live into trying to foster, trying to create here and now. And so is it any wonder that Paul tells them to be patient in tribulation, to pray constantly, considering the strife, rancor, and division we are currently living in and have been living in. Even despite these conditions, here's the thing, even despite these conditions, our peacemaker brothers and sisters continue to believe that such a world is possible, which is why we need them. Continue to believe that such a world is possible. When pessimism wins out, when people put their own selfish good ahead of others, these folks continue to have hope that we can do exactly what we just talked about. And because they believe that such a world is possible, they talk about it. They try to create a vision for it. They try to live like it is real, even when it is not. And so remember our challenger brothers and sisters from last week? Well, they can, A, one, lean into this type of justice and righteousness work. And because they can lean into it, B, two, they can challenge the fools and scoundrels from our Isaiah passage who are deceiving us and tricking us. Additionally, our peacemaker brothers and sisters can also lean into what our challenger brothers and sisters do and do some of that challenger work themselves. Jesus himself does this kind of work, challenging fools and scoundrels and bringing forth peace when he heals the servant of the high priest whose ear had been cut off in the fracas around his arrest. Our peacemaker brothers and sisters are inclined to work towards peace even in the face of what appear to be insurmountable odds. But like our challenger brothers and sisters, they have a growing edge too. All of this peacemaking that we have been talking about is outward focused feels intimidating, trying to navigate conflict. What happens when the peacemaking instead becomes inwardly focused and about keeping one's own peace regardless of what is happening around them? In order to keep their own delicate private bubble of peace, peace peacemakers become peacekeepers by doing everything in their power to avoid conflict like it is one of the plagues. If conflict emerges in a family or work setting, you may see a peacemaker brother or sister literally retreat into themselves, their own private little bubble of peace where they disengage from what is happening around them and zone out. Of 
course, the problem with conflict avoidance is that they are still aggrieved and need to communicate their grievance in some way. That way becomes passive aggressive behaviors. Our peacemaker brothers and sisters are most guilty of this kind of behavior, passive aggressiveness. But even all that aside, here's the greatest risk that our peacemaker brothers and sisters run when they become inwardly focused peacekeepers. Let's not forget that God made each and every person unique. There has never been, there is not currently, nor will there ever be another you. Dear peacemaker, brother, and sister, you reflect a bit of the divine. In order to avoid conflict at all costs, though, you will tend to merge with those around you, potentially losing all sense of your own unique, fearfully and wonderfully made self. To have no sense of yourself, to not have any idea of your own wants and needs, to sacrifice every bit of yourself possible in acquiescence to those around you, so as to keep your own peace. It's not what God wants for you. It's not the purpose God made you for. You reflect a bit of the divine. How can you reflect that bit of God if you don't even know who you are? All of us have work to do, growing, becoming to do. We are in process of moving towards maturity, towards fullness, towards completeness. You'll recall our challenging brothers and sisters have to learn to trust again. Our peacemaking brothers and sisters have to learn to understand and be true to themselves. Even if that means a bit of conflict sometimes. After all, we saw last week with Elijah and the prophets of Baal and Jesus and the money changers. God isn't afraid of a little bit of conflict. Therefore, beloved peacemaking brothers and sisters, you need not be afraid of a little conflict either. Amen. Let us begin our response to God's word read and proclaimed with the affirmation of our common faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, the words of the Lord Jesus, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. <laughs>
both monetary and musical, that we have received. Use wisdom and discernment as best how to utilize them for the upbuilding of your kingdom. May your divine will be done and not our own. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As we transition into prayers of the people, uh, foremost upon our hearts, I hope you will have noticed in the announcements uh, that uh, indeed, unfortunately, Norman Lands passed yesterday, uh, about 12 noon, give or take, uh, here at Lexington Regional. And so, um, yeah, I was called uh, about 6.45 in the morning. I got there about 7 and was able to pray with uh, Norman Chanel. Lynn and James were there in uh, Lori. And uh, so we were able to pray and uh, hopefully ease Norm's transition. And uh, yeah, I got a call about five hours later. He passed. So uh, we are planning, currently planning, it's not locked in stone, but we are planning on uh, holding service here for Norm on Wednesday. So that would be Wednesday morning, uh, about 10.30, I think, 10, 10.30, somewhere in there. Uh, and as those details become clear, we will be sure to send out communication via email. And of course, Reynolds Love will communicate how they always communicate all of their uh, stuff as well. Um, I also know we are praying for Maury Delap. Uh, he has been taken to Kearney Regional uh, with COVID. And so he's on oxygen there. And uh, oh, remdesivir, uh, trying to get things situated and sorted. It, to my understanding, in speaking with Marlene, I spoke to her Friday and yesterday, it doesn't appear to be an emergency. It's just more kind of like, let's run prevent and keep things safe for as long as possible. Um, that's what I mean. I mean, those are, those are, new concerns we still keep far lifted up to you or lifted up and, and um, want to be caring for far a joy is that joyce is here we've been praying for joyce and so uh, we'll share that joy that she's feeling improved enough to be here with us and join us uh, so that brings me great joy um, what else what else from the congregation what, what do y'all have come uh, you know what let me bring my Right down to Lord God, who testifies to us that your steadfast love never ceases, that when we go through hard, tumultuous things, when we go through the valleys that this life throws at us, your steadfast love carries us through those valleys. We especially 
offer to you and your pair, Janelle. And all of her family as they navigate this valley that is the loss of Norm. And we ask for your presence here amongst this congregation who will be doing our own mourning with us beloved one. Abide with us through this valley. We lift up Maury to you and Marlene as uh, Maury works through this COVID diagnosis. Pray that you would um, help him to have a positive attitude, an attitude towards healing and wellness, and that the medication being administered would facilitate that process. I pray that you abide with Marlene and offer peace and comfort that you are present and working and abiding. We continue to lift up Barb Taylor to you and all of her family and all of us as we seek her wellness and seek her recovery, be with her, give her strength and resilience as she seeks her own wellness and recovery. Thank you, Lord God, for help, for aid and assistance in the form of family, kids who come out to help get stuff done efficiently, parents who come out to help stuff get done efficiently, friends who come out to help get stuff done efficiently. We're grateful that Quinn was able to navigate his U-Haul trip safely. And we ask that you would abide with him as he begins his work in a place that needs a whole lot of peacemaking right now. Thank you, Lord God, that you provide us with ways to take a little break every now and again from the tumult, from the chaos, from the busyness, from the hecticness of these lives that we lead. Thanks for music and for sports and for all the things. And so thanks for keeping our football players safe and uh, giving us here in Lex something to cheer for. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly cares, but to love that which is above. And even now, while we live among transient things to hold fast to those things that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Thank you for Messiah who taught us to pray the same. Our, our Father, Father, who Lord, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen so holly and i are also in the interest of um teaching new hymns to you not just new modern style songs so this is going to be a new hymn uh, that you all may not be so familiar with. So, Holly is kind of checking. He's going to play through the melody, the whole thing, first time. So, y'all listen up and get a sense for what that melody is, and then join with us in singing, O God of Every Nation, number 289. <laughs>
sistema de equilíbrio, por exemplo, na formação de hidro. Não. É de gás químico. E para o gás que não gera água de vida, que vem de sempre de si, para o que não está na terra. Make you complete, make you whole, and everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 